Hi, Greg Perry, the historic preservationist. Welcome to the sign of the Key Tavern, New Jersey's oldest colonial tavern, originally located where Route 40 and 45 intersect in historic Woodstown, New Jersey, where the corner bar now stands. So it's been a bar continuous for a long time. Um, this is the tavern, as I'm sure you've heard in a lot of other videos. Um, this tavern was moved here in 1726. John Shivers, uh, a land mogul, built this, um, given uh, hundreds and hundreds of acres by the King of England. So he built this tavern kind of as a real estate, uh, an outpost. Uh, it was a fur trading center. It was a place you could board your horse, get a quick, uh, quick mug of ale or uh, uh, some porridge and a... Uh, or, or you can spend the night. So, I mean, or all, or all three combined. But remember, these taverns were, they were places where, uh, you know, uh, church services were held, whatever de denomination, which there were, there were only a few here. Um, political operatives would be here. Um, the militia, whoever was in charge of that part of the country, would you could have the Tories, or the, uh, you could have the colonials here. Um, and it was a place uh, for the, you know, it was a place to meet people because remember, you know, you're a, you're a farmer, you're out in the middle of nowhere, and generally, where are you going to meet people? I mean, it's very, very difficult. So you come here to find the latest news, yeah. The rider coming through once a week, and a pamphleteer stop here. It leaves his pamphlets here, and you come pick one up. Or if you can't read, chances are you can't read anyway. So you'd have some, you'd have a reading at a certain time of the week or several times of the week. Someone who had a an iota of education would come here and read to everybody to know what was happening in the colonies. Especially, I mean, um, you know, a, a, what was this, a four-day jaunt into Philadelphia by, by really pushing it? It could take more. Um, remember, this was heavily, heavily forested. A squirrel, a squirrel could go from the top of Maine, from Calais, Maine, all the way to Florida and never touch the ground. There were so many trees. And look how we've destroyed it today. Look how we've destroyed it. So disregard for timber and everything else. So, uh, um, given diaries of uh, John Shiver's diaries and, and a few from Samuel Shiver's, so we know exactly when he opened this in 1669, what was in here, what, uh, what furniture was in here. Right now, we're displaying this somewhere from 17, uh, some 1695 to 17, 1669 in that area. Um, that's what we're displaying. So, uh, John Shivers was able to accumulate tavern tables, local chairs, um, the set he came, brought over when he first came from England on the ship, um, pewter cupboards, corner pewter cupboards, uh, other pewter cover over the set tea. And John Shivers had a pension for clocks. He was a very wealthy man. He brought these two 30 hour clocks. And remember the single hand clocks um, were much cheaper. They were about half price of a, a traditional two-handed clock. So there's no minute hand there. And remember, no one had a conception of what minutes were. They, could, they couldn't even read the time on there. They could just hear the bells. They may not even be able to count. The bloody people were so illiterate and ignorant in this part of the world at that point. So this was a, this was a high grade, uh, you know, IT type mechanism that, that they were looking. And it, uh, probably at one point, it could have been quite even scary to them. Um, so this was the original cage bar, and uh, as we've said before, this uh, this was this building, the interior. A lot of it was taken and sold to someone in 1946. We had a, a local woman, woman buy this property, and um, she plumbed it for the first time, she heated it for the first time, and she electrified it for the first time in 1946, and she damn near destroyed it. And and you know just just a word about local history and local history books. Um, we have to remember somewhere in the 1850s to maybe 1920s, not to 1950s, people wrote books about history. Um, historians were always in intriguing people to the populace. And a lot of times when people wrote history books, they wrote it in the way that they wanted to shed the light on it. And, and a lot of it, history goes way back to that. So uh, they wrote that the, the woman who bought this house was actually doing a restoration, but in fact, she was doing a bastardization on this house, not a restoration of this property, this dwelling. And uh, anyway, she, she banded up through this wonderful cage bar and a lot of the wainscoting in here, a lot of the, 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 uh, the moldings throughout the dwelling and, and sold it to someone in Maine, and uh, a woman in Maine. And I got a phone call, I don't know, seven, eight years ago from someone who said, uh, 
I have a lot of things in your house, um, the cage bar, yada, yada. He went down the list and he said, you may be interested. He says, uh, and this was the son of the woman. And now this man is 75 years old and he said, I'm dying of cancer. I don't have long to live. Do you want to purchase this? And so I just, uh, I sent him a check for, you know, a few thousand dollars and I had no idea. And for all I know, it could have been a scam, rented a van and um, off to Maine and surprise, surprise, he had photographs of where the stuff was taken from in the house. So what a great find, but for example, the cage bar was just covered with black mold. It was in, it was in a, a basement, a damp basement, and things were warped and cupped and torted. And um, so just to restore these objects took a, a grand amount of time, but nevertheless, it's good to have them home. And uh, I think our candle just went out. Candles, very, the, the, the most costliest commodity here at the sign of the tea cavern, tax sign of the Sign of the Key Tavern, um, the most costly uh, commodity. Um, you can make your own, but still, it took time. It took time from other things. It was very important. So we're a little bit overlit here in the tavern, uh, but you know, even today, uh, what you're seeing here, it, it's it's costly. So when uh, when you have a house tour here, you know, going over four or five hours, um, I'm burning three hundred dollars in candles throughout the dwelling. So. It gets kept, you're probably doing three total candle changes. So it gets rather, rather costly. And back then it was dim. It was very dimly lit. And this would have been, in fact, this would have been the back of the tavern. Oh. Thank you. Um, this would have been the back of the tavern and, and there were no windows in the back of the tavern. So when they orientated this to the house, to the Samuel Shivers house in 1726, for Shivers needed more space for his growing family, so his father died. He inherited this tavern. He didn't want to run it anymore, um, so he had it disassembled by three Native Americans. It was all labeled, timber frame taken apart, and four oxen. They drug it up here on a sled, and they reassembled it in a, in a couple of weeks, and it cost him a whole whopping 200 U.S. dollars today. So um, he just, you know, some bartering, some guns, some, some furs, and some things like that, and he, everyone was happy. So he got... Um, you know, he doubled the size of his house essentially. So they put the back in the front and then they put windows top and bottom. Um, you would have never had windows because alcohol, beyond candles, which were very important and very costly, alcohol is what everybody wanted. And remember though, everybody was drinking alcohol. A lot of infants were drinking alcohol. If they weren't drinking milk and they're not nursing and things like that, they're drinking some kind of ale because you couldn't trust the water. Water had disease ridden all through it. So everybody was drinking ale, hard cider, from, from infants to everyone. So who knows if alcoholism ran rapid, who knows the alcohol content, but everybody was drinking some sort of alcohol all the time. And it was essential, otherwise you're gonna be sick all the time. So, uh, so a real key here in the tavern. But nevertheless, um, you didn't have windows because people wanted to break in and steal the alcohol. So not a good thing. You never had wine in the tavern though, we must say that. So they put the, the windows in to balance architecturally the house out. And uh, so the, the front door is in the back now, and, and that's fine, and that's fine. And we have a large dividing wall to my left here. And this dividing wall, everyone says, well, geez, why is that wall so thick? You know, the wall is thick for, um, the main reason is there's a little stairway in there. And, and there's a secret door in the back. The hutch is in front of it right now. And you can get up there, it's about 18 inches wide. And, uh, you know, you can't eat too much when you're going up there. You'll never fit. You get stuck and you'll die there. But it was a way to get upstairs quickly. The main stairway was right in the front where the front door was. Um, it used to be. And that, of course, has been taken out with the addition of this dwelling with the, the Shivers House dwelling. Um, so this stairway is because there's a lot of people drank too much by, you know, 9, 10 o'clock when the last call for alcohol and if the, the owner or the proprietor had to get up there quickly, they'd use this back stairway to do it. So, uh, and, and this is a, uh, reminds me of uh, Philadelphia, the horn and hard arts of the 1950s and uh, 60s. Uh, it's a pass-through. So you would have had somebody um, in the hearth room actually cooking and passing it through. And then you would have had a server here. And again, a Native American or, uh, or a slave possibly, or, or a child of the owner and taking it and putting it on one of the tables. You'd accommodate maybe 12 diners here at one time. And uh, um, 
Upstairs, you could accommodate uh, 12, maybe 16 people sleeping. You had two, two levels of rooms upstairs. You had one room that for a certain set amount of money, you would uh, just get a burlap blanket and it would have been over this room, with, which is not heated. The other room is heated with the fireplace, the main fireplace, the hearth fireplace, and that would have had a bed in it. But the one room, you would have slept on the floor with a burlap blanket, no pillow, nothing like that. And you know you could have accommodated eight, nine people in that. The other room had a big bed, and you would have paid twice as much to sleep in the bed. And if you slept in the bed, you're sleeping with people you never met before, but you're sleeping with your clothes on them. Totally. Um, and, and a blanket also, so to keep warm. So a little more comfort for uh, you know those travelers. So if you had the, if you had the money, um, they paid. But uh, so we told you a little bit about the architecture. You can, again, you can see that the the hand hewn um, floor rafters here, um, uh, you know, four and a half, five inches wide by nine, nine and a half inches. So it's primary timber framing, and it's a way to date this dwelling. It's a way to date it. Now I've been throughout the entire circumference of this entire dwelling um, doing a full sympathetic restoration of all the walls. And I've seen the walls and there was rot and there was vermin. There was a whole series of stuff going on, but it survived the white oak, super strong, um, you know, not furniture grade stuff, but this is white oak that resisted. Uh, oh, we have Sage Franklin, but it resisted rot. But here's the doctor coming up. Sage, you wanna come up? Come on, get up here. Um, but nevertheless, it resisted rot, and that's why you know it still exists today. I knew it was coming because uh, and this is a plug. Uh, a couple years ago, we didn't really take off too well, but this is Sage Franklin Brush uh, Blush. This is a, a blush wine we had imported from France, and there's a picture of the doctor there. He's yawning in the morning. So, uh, you know, how cute is that? Sage Franklin Blush. So very high quality from the Bandal region of of uh, the Côte d'Azur in France, but. Uh, Anyway, um, we need a head of pest control here, and, and Sage keeps them all under control, so good boy. So um, right now, this tavern is celebrating its 352nd year, 352nd. Imagine that, timber, timber lasting for that long. It's absolutely astonishing. And we're here in West Jersey, you know, around Salem and Alloway and Mannington and, and, and over in Cumberland County in Bridgeton. Um, Greenwich or Greenwich as they call it. Um, and there's a ton of brick homes. And bricks, if properly pointed and, and taken care of, properly baked, are gonna last for a long time. But a timber frame house, quite impressive. And, and it makes it so much more important, absolutely. And sitting here in the oldest tower makes it very important too. So very few people had known this until the, the uh, the, uh, the diaries have come out, and, and, but it is mentioned in three hardback books that this was the oldest tavern, 1669. Hey, no, Sage. Watch. Sage, no. Um, 1669, the Burn Your Whiskers. So he's in the, the pass-through there. Um, but right here we have a nice Welsh, uh, Welsh dresser, and uh, Sage, no. Hey, come on. A Welsh dresser. Uh, with some pewter that may have been in the tavern at the time. It wasn't, but I mean, this is reminiscent of what was here. And uh, so nice uh, oak, English oak, English brown oak, very warm and romantic. Uh, there was a color paint already on this this wall. The, the color paint was green, it was a milk paint. And uh, so trying to emulate that color again. And uh, we have plaster walls. And uh, I'm inside, obviously, the cage bar. And uh, over here, this window was encased in sheetrock when the property was acquired. And it was actually in the wall. So I'm checking the timber frame. I pulled all the clavard. All the clavard's been replaced on this end, which is the south end, and the, the north side. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the, uh, the east side and, and the south side here. So fixing the degradation, pulling this off, here's a window. So the window's been restored. Um, Glass is still there, good shape, all pulled out, and put back in and, and glazed in. So, uh, so this is what, and you would have had pamphlets here, remember, pamphlets in the day. This was the news center, your mail. You would have had your mail. How many mails did you get? Maybe you got one piece of mail a month or every two or three months, but the mail was here. Mail is even faster then than it is today. Because uh, today we have people, people in the government that are actually destroying mail machines. Um, how the hell is that? 
in, in the 18th century, you can get a letter to New York in 24 hours to New York City. Today, it probably takes a month, being facetious. It probably takes a week to get to New York City from here in historic Woodstown from the sign of the Key Tavern. So, so look at where we've gone. Franklin set that up. He set the... So, uh, so this is what it will look like, the ambiance, but a little, little too many candles, and, uh, but uh, we need this for uh, museum goers and, uh, you know, to, to help explain. So we're here to, to educate the public and, and for people that don't even know this tavern exists in their neighborhood or in their county or in their South Jersey or West Jersey region. Um, enjoy bringing groups of you know, school kids, seniors through, uh, obviously not in the last year and a half or two, uh, but ready to open up again and, and try to become an educational situation here to uh, to help show the gem that they have and, and uh, to help learn their past so they can be better guided for their future. So um, I think we're going to close. And uh, anyway, uh, Greg Perry, the historic preservation, I'm going to sign off. But uh, so don't forget, um, this is just not a promo for the tavern and the Shivers House. But, uh, you know, if, if any groups go by, feel free to look us up online, the Historic Preservationists, and you can find about the Shivers House Museum. And if you want to bring a group through, and uh, well in advance, three to four months in advance, we need for reservations. So um, thanks for stopping by to Ambiance in New Jersey's oldest colonial tavern. Greg Perry, signing off.